Hello everybody, I'm Alexander Shelley, Music Director of the National Arts Centre Orchestra and I'm here in our Schenkman Smith Atelier, one of our education rooms with my uh, friend Josh Bullen and we're going to work on Beethoven's uh, fourth symphony today, the introduction, as part of a series of videos that we're doing exploring some interesting parts of Beethoven's symphonies from the point of view of a conductor. Uh, this is in the context of our Beethoven Festival which is coming up to open our season in September of 2018. Uh, I'm delighted uh, to be able to welcome Claire Stevens who will be playing the piano for us off camera but she's there and she's brilliant. Thank you Claire for playing for us today. For those of you who have tuned in uh, to learn more about uh, some of these corners in Beethoven's Fourth Symphony. We're going to be posting uh, a link below to IMSLP and you can download uh, the score of Beethoven's Fourth so you can read along while we're working. Uh, we're going to start off uh, with a section from the first movement and then we're going to go into the second movement and focus on those two areas uh, today. And to begin with, I'm going to ask Josh to conduct uh, for Claire the beginning of the symphony up to the very beginning of the exposition, so around uh, measure 64. So. Have fun Thanks. and we'll start work in a minute. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Claire, very much. So, uh, first of all, uh, bravo. You did uh, many things very beautifully uh, indeed, I thought. Um, a place where I'd start is just working backwards into the Allegro. Um, you did something interesting, which is you went into the new tempo in one. Yes. And then you went back into two. So you went, do you yum? Basically, once you got to the yup, up, 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 yes. you're in two. Um, I don't know if you noticed, there was a slight stutter in the way Claire responded to that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's 
one person stuttering a little bit, <laughs> uh, do you want one or two? If you magnify that by 70 or 80 people, you're going to have a similar stutter. Sure. I, I think your first instinct to be in one was correct. Okay. I understand why you went back into two, uh, because you feel like uh, maybe we'll get out of control in one. Maybe it'll start rushing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I just want to start by talking about that a little bit. Um, now, first of all, why, why would we say it's in one? Um, I think an interesting uh, point to bear in mind is when you look at the, the score, when you look at the, the metronome marks that Beethoven mm -hmm. gave, uh, and he did, he did metronome marks for symphonies one to eight in 1817, um, he marks a, a tempo, which you were very close to. You were slightly under it, but you were very close to it. Um, a, a tempo of a whole note yes. is 80. Yes. Now, um, there have been lots of arguments, discussions <laughs> around yes. Beethoven's markings. Let's just put that aside for a minute. One, one element of his markings that I find one shouldn't ignore, and I tend to stick pretty closely to all the tempos he marked, but one, one element I wouldn't ignore is the beats that he was thinking in. It's okay. a big giveaway. So if he put uh, a half note is 160, right. then I would have said, ah, oh, he's thinking, but I think ignoring the actual tempo itself, the very fact that he marked a whole note as the, the rhythm in which we should be uh, feeling it is a giveaway. So I think, the, the, to put it succinctly, I think your instinct was exactly the instinct that Beethoven had. The other advantage to it is that when you move from the four beat that you have in the introduction, mm -hmm. even though it's not one to one, he marks the introduction as 66 and then the, the main body of the movement right. in, in 80, faster, yeah. it's, it's still this feeling of one, do, dum, dum, do yum. The yum is more organic. Close. So anyway, what I would do, uh, before we go into to detail with other things, I would ask you to just go back uh, to perhaps uh, measure 20, uh, is that a three or is that? That's a three. That's a three. 34, if you can find that, Claire. Um, it's where the A major is and then lots of uh, A's. And just try that link again through to, the, to where you stopped before in one. Okay. And what I would also ask you to do is, if, if your concern was that we're going to lose control in one, <laughs> Do what you can within that physically to indicate stability. Okay? Okay. <laughs> 34? Well done. Um, so let's, let's take this, this passage uh, for a moment. Um, starting at the Allegro, one, one thing that, oh, we've got a new baton. Let me yes. swap back yeah, to the old one. Yeah. <laughs> um, when, uh, when we conduct something in one, and uh, in another one of our videos, we're going to talk about the fifth symphony, which is all about beating in one. Uh, but even here, <coughs> uh, it opens up uh, a, a few questions. One is, how to control, um, how to say I'm, bigging, uh, I'm beating a, a bigger unit, how do I maintain control? And the second is, what are the options? What, how does one free us up to indicate things? Um, dealing with the first uh, question one, uh, first, the question of, of control. Um, you, at the moment, uh, you're, you're, doing, you're engaging very well, you're using eye contact, you're physically present. You, at the moment, are doubling up a fair amount between your right hand and your left hand, at moments where I can see you're wanting either intensity or control. In terms of making a one beat look stable, uh, I would think about uh, uh, elongating from the control point of the beat through down to your arm and using this as to give an indication of weight. So if I want to give a beat that's light, I use more of the front of the stick. So one, to yum, to yum, be yum, be yum, be yum, be yum, I can give it flick. But if I want stability, I one, to yum, it's the same tempo, but I'm giving an indication to the, to the musicians that we have a certain weight of sound behind it. So um, that's the, the first thing I would say when you go team, 
pam, 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 ti yum, ti yum, and then ti yum, ti yum, ti yum, pi yum, pi yum. Feel yourself that there's a kind of uh, a weight also to this part of the arm that supports it. The next point to, to, to do with phrasing is if we're in four, uh, if, sorry, if we're in one, we can indicate through the four bar and the eight bar phrases direction. So ti yum, ti yum. Tiam, 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 pop, 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 beam, for example, or di ya ta 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 di. Now, what you'll see is that I'm subtly actually indicating a four within the one. So, when we revisit this now, I would ask you to make clear that we're in one, to use a little bit more weight in this in this mechanism from the shoulder down to show that we're we're keeping stable within the tempo. But then once we get into the music proper, to show me where you'd like the phrase to go, just using your right hand. If you can, okay. I know it feels weird, if you can, just keep this hand by your side for yeah. the moment okay. and feel all the control here. Okay? Same place. Aha, that's okay, we can stop from No, I, I, I see the you. So let's, let's just recap uh, a little bit about the, the different points of the arm. So we have uh, three points, the elbow, uh, sorry, <laughs> the shoulder, um, from which the, the fundament of our, our, our beat comes. So uh, the coordinates, let's say, of one, two, three, four, like that, just coming from the shoulder. And then we have this, the, the elbow, and we have the wrist to give uh, impulses, yeah? So a, a simple one beat would be just using the shoulder as a pivot. Do yum, do yum. But I would suggest, if I may, that um, if you just, if we just use that like that a little bit more, that you feel as you land, do yum, do yum, this feeling, yeah? So it's, it is coming from here, but it's almost as if your, your, your arm is landing on a table right. without moving your, your, your shoulders. Um, so it's the difference between let's say, di yum, di yum, di yum, di yum, I exaggerate, and di yum, di yum. It's just you feel it coming, the weight from here. Sure. And yep. Do you want to just, uh, just give it a go with me? Three, and one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm slightly, again, everybody has to find their own physical mm -hmm. approach. I'm slightly more pronated like that, so okay. I have a slightly more curve in the arm. Di yum, di yum. Yum, di yum, di yum. You can, of course, do di yum, di yum, di yum. You can do whatever you want, but the principle needs to remain the same. That you're indicating through a calm, uh, centered body, you're indicating weight in sure. the in the beat. One other thing, yeah. um, Claire, could you just uh, play uh, measure thirty-four again? Yeah. So this, one of the things that you need to try, I can see you're, you're, you're trying to get a maximum crescendo. Mm -hmm. One thing that's very useful to do is in that beat, indicate when you, in that bar, indicate on each of the beats that it's not going to move forward. So, bom, bom, one, ba, ba. Okay. So there's a physical stop there. It gives this sense of holding the tempo. And we'll, we'll talk about why in a minute, why those A's are so important. But if you could build that in too, I'd be grateful. Let's see how it works. Very good. I'm sorry to stop you. You are, remember that the position of the, the baton mm -hmm. uh, will reflect also the sound that musicians will, will give you. So if you're bom, 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 you may be indicating a crescendo by a bigger movement, but you're not indicating a change in intensity of sound. And what I would suggest is, is that you take that sort of zero line for your beat, which you're doing very effectively, you're keeping very consistent, it's easy to follow, and you bit by bit during that bar make it clear that the sound has more weight. Okay. So one, bom, 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 right. B. It's, it's, 
impossible for musicians not to feel like they're giving more sound there. Mm -hmm. So just add that in, okay? okay? Now, deeper, physically lower. Excellent. Let me uh, point out uh, one other thing. So you're thinking about this plane, first beat, bom, 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 bom. It's, if it's helpful in your mind to actually think of having a material that you're conducting into that's more resistant than air. Okay. So it's kind of difficult to get down there, yeah? That's one thing. When you get to the, um, when you get to the F major 7 chord, yeah? Uh, bom, 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 B, it's useful in the beat because unlike a, well, you're playing chords like this, the, 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 the rest of the orchestra will be holding the note to indicate the intensity of holding. You're, you're, you're already showing that, it, that we're kind of, you know, there and on. But if you could imagine, bum, 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 do yum, and it doesn't need to be that. Sure. But something with the, that indicates, ah, oh, this is intense, okay? Good. So I'm just going to, uh, first of all, the comment I made about beating in one, this of course, uh, it, my conviction that that's the way the piece should be, but ultimately it, it can't fight against your conviction. So I can see that there's a lot of you that's feeling it in two, which is great. So what we'll do in a moment is we'll talk a little bit about how to approach it if you conduct it in two, which is absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to just uh, play with Claire once, indicating a little bit what I mean about um, the conducting in four. It doesn't need to be too much like a four, more an inflection uh, of it as you uh, uh, go through this passage. Um, and what happened just now was that in measure 36, mm -hmm. um, you were, of course, trying to, to, to do what I'd ask you to do. You actually ended up adding a kind of half beat <laughs> to the bar by accident. Yeah. That's, you know, something which if you want to do, if you want to give the feeling of a pause, uh, a fermata, you need to do slightly differently. But I think it was just... I use too much going on. Yeah, that's on. fine. That's yeah. fine. So listen, um, I'm just going to con conduct this section, and maybe I'll make a couple of comments to you as, as we do it. So first of all, um, the, the length and the sounds of these first few notes, be aware that it's not just the beginning of the note you're indicating, but how, how you want them to continue. So for example, we're at 34. Thank you very much. That's that's super. Let's um, let me just do a version of that where I would be in two at the Allegro Vivace, just to try and be helpful. Fine, it'll work like this, and we could thank you. We could talk about how to phrase in two, but if you'll see, one thing that I made very clear in the first bar of the Allegro was that the first beat was going to come up again. So this idea that the beat goes down, and then you give them a clear uh, kick in the middle of the bar okay. will, will be essential. I'd like you to, to do 34, uh, and just the first few bars of the Allegro, a beating a two okay. and make sure that it's crystal clear for any musician watching.
Good. Yeah. That's great. So, di yum, bi yum, bi yum, di yum. Mm. It's almost from the wrist. So again, one way to you can even conduct two from the fingers like that. Yeah. Or one, two, one, two, just from the wrist, turning the turning the upper arm, or you can use the whole arm like that. But what we're wanting is a clear downward motion in a kind of umbrella back up. Um, but ultimately it was clear, but it's good to, to have uh, lots of variations for a super clear and decisive uh, two. So what I'd like to do, um, just so that we can talk about this transition uh, musically for a moment, is to go back to measure 25, please. And just conduct this passage, please, into the uh, Allegro. Great. I'm going to stop you there. Sorry, George. I'm going to stop you there. Could you talk to me musically about the section that we just heard? So tell me from measure 25 through to where we've just got, mm -hmm. uh, got to. Well, let me ask you a question. Let me put it differently. Sure. There's a forte piano, 7, 8, 9, at the end of 29. Mm -hmm. What is the significance of that forte piano? Why do we think it's there? Yeah. Um, because he's changed the division of the bar? Nope. No? Nope. I'm not trying to be annoying. I'm just no, seeing I if understand. you... <laughs> well, let me, let me ask you a different question. Sure. The symphony is in... Uh, B flat. Yeah. B flat. Sure. But which B flat... Mm. Well, so B flat major. There we go. The very, very first note of the piece. Could you play it? Okay. <laughs> So we've got B flat. We don't know if it's major or minor. Uh, we don't know. It could be E flat major. It could be the fifth. It could be the third of G minor. It could be anything. But it's a B flat. That's, so that's a good start. Now, the next note might help us. Could you just tell us what the next note is? So, oh, we're in G flat major. A la. So, oh, no, we're in E flat minor. D, F. Yeah. Then D flat. OK, so that outlines a B flat major chord. D, la, 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 li. Uh, back to the G flat, and then we go to F major. Okay. Boom. Back to the next B flat. We haven't found yet B flat major, so mm -hmm. we take the next B flat, the octaves, please, the forte piano. This is four before, five before letter A, 10, 11, 12, measure 13. Okay. So we try the same thing. T la di la di la di la di. Boom. And we stay in F sharp. Right, we're in F sharp major. Okay, so we're how many bars into the piece? 19. We haven't yet heard B flat major. So that continues in 20, 21, 22, 23. And then when we get to where we just started, 25, what key are we in? G major. Could we start there, please? So we still haven't, the whole first 24 measures of the piece, we haven't heard the key. Right. So we're in G major. Hmm. And we modulate again. C major, mm, uh, A major, D minor, and then, thank you, okay. B flat. B flat major. It's taken us all this right. time. Bam, dom, dom, ba, lom, dom, ti, and then we modulate straight away from it. So it's taken all this time. <laughs> in the piece to get from his first note, the B-flat, and say to himself, right, how am I going to find B-flat major? How am I going to find B-flat major? And that is the point of that Sforzando piano. It's not out of nothing. So the reason I mention that um, is that for you as an interpreter, when you're preparing the score, you have to ask, there's nothing by coincidence of Beethoven. Whenever he puts any markings, it's because it's the result of something logical. It's all bound together, the emotional, the structural, the, the logical. Um, and that's something that is required of you when you're studying the score to find sure. um, and, and understand. But I think it also then changes the way with which one approaches that forte piano because it, it, turns, it turns into something different. You often hear tom, tom, ta, like that, a kind of 
sound. <laughs> or, a, you know, there's a lot of ways to color that forte piano. But if you realize it's a moment of <gasps> realization, we finally reached something we've been looking for, for, for 30 measures, then actually the coloration of the forte piano can become bright and hopeful and beautiful. Sure. Um, so that's then something which in the, oh, I stole your baton. I'm going to steal this one too. One <laughs> but I would, for example, in, if we could take measure 25 again, I would say we're starting off. We're starting off on a journey of searching. Unless, and then. And then we modulate away from it again. Um, and the thing is, if you give, it's always, it's a, it's a different sound on the piano, but if you give to the orchestra lim, tom, tom, po, this gesture, it'll have that warmth, that kind of, mm, we're home now. Okay. Um, and so it changes everything, if yeah, you see what I mean. Yeah. The, other, the other thing is, as you'll see, I was indicating, in the four bars before, rather than feeling inexorably drawn towards the forte piano, as a, a sort of avoiding crescendo, but you still feel it, is to imagine you didn't know that that B flat major was coming. You, you, you modulate away G major, C major, A major, D minor. It's an option. And it's something you can show the orchestra that instead of getting closer to your arrival point, you're actually moving it away from it. So I would ask you to repeat that section one more time. Okay. With that in mind, see if you can show Claire that we're actually getting lost. And then indicate to her a warm gesture for that uh, B flat major. Sure. Thanks. So we'll go from 25. 24, is it? Sorry. 25. Five. Yeah. So remember that across the bar line, the, there's a resolution. It's the, the, the clarinets each time. Mm -hmm. mm, tom, tom, Paul. It's easy to think of bom, plom, plom, t, and because there's nothing really happening in the melodic line there, this, that's passed between the firsts up to the clarinet, one thinks it's passive, but actually it's the moment of resolution into the new key. Let me indicate that from the same place, please. Uh, and the G major. So we're in G major, but the interesting moment is across the bar. Because it keeps on going the wrong way until the moment of realization. Now we'll get into why, so we go into A major here, implied D minor. And the thing is, two bars after, we'll just stop there for a second, two bars after having found the home key, we've now modulated back to an implied D minor, or an A major chord. T, La, so there's our A. And you think, well, now how, as a composer, do I get from where we are now to where I want to be? Lom, bom, bom, ah, if I put F major under it, pom, 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 ba, and then you have B flat. Now, that, that is such an enlightening thing to realize for this whole introduction, that that's how it's tied together. The introduction is not just an emotional expression. At the core of it, it's a search, mm. like a light that goes on, but without any clear information, to the B-flat, and then immediately getting lost for a couple of bars. But the A is a form of emancipation. It's saying, we can get there, we can do it, which is why it's repeated, 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 and then he puts the right harmony underneath it. So again, I think there's an argument for resistance in that, but we were talking about the technical side of it. But that's all now going to be at the service of understanding this, this harmonic shape. So l explore, please, in, in the way you beat, the way you think. Pom, 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 pilom. The resolutions. Tilom. And then the coloration of the B flat major. Warm. One, two, three. Warm. And then think of the modulation into A minor around measure 30, uh, A major, sorry, measure 33, 34. And then as you go through 34, 35, the power of those A naturals, 
think about the, 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 the huge crescendo to fortissimo. Okay. Sorry, it's a lot of information, but let's try it again from 25, the same, the G major. Mysterioso, you don't need to beat too strongly. We're lost. Indicated diminuendo. Now a surprise and warmth. Good. Good. Thank you, Josh. Let me, as I'm, as I'm conducting, let me, we'll, we'll just do this slowly. Let me indicate a couple of the things that I'm trying to achieve with the beat. So this is the same. So the sense, I'm not beating big. The sense of calm in the overall structure. With my left hand indicating that there's a longer line than the, just the quarters. Now the bit of depth of sound and a diminuendo back to piano. And now I'm going to indicate a little bit more of a lyrical line. And then we go back to nothing. Yeah. So, thank you. So, I would say that you're very clear. You're very clear. So that's something you can just sort of say, thank God it's done, uh, uh, with your beat. Now think about saying, where do I really need uh, this clarity? Bearing in mind that this pulse of roughly 66 has been going on now for 30 measures. So you could even say, rom, boom, 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 It would all work. Even if you want to carry on beating, mm -hmm. remember that that's the ultimate, like, expression. Is it calm? Dim. Boom, boom, boom. And reduce it as much as possible. Yeah. So just go for a more inside the box. Okay. Longer lines. Less, less flick in your beat. Great. Okay, excellent, excellent, thank you. So let me just uh, talk about how we're going to achieve that. I was asking to do less flick in your beat. If you beat like this, one, two, three, four, the orchestra will respond by going ga, ga, ga. If you're one, two, boom, 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 you'll indicate just a little bit less attack, smoother, more of a sort of listening color. And when you get to the forte piano, I know that you're thinking about a lot. I'm sorry, I'm throwing a lot of points at you. In your upbeat, I need to see the sound you want. So one, two, pa. Or it could be one, two, ba. Or it could be one, two, ba. It could be anything. But uh, I need to see, and more importantly, the musicians need to see, are we going to go ba, or are we going to go pa, or are we going to go you know, so uh, in a sense, just connect. If possible, I know you're thinking about a lot at the moment, but just connect your arm with the feeling of the sound. So again, if you go, that would be a natural gesture. If you want, ah, you might do that. Um, but try when you're thinking about this at home. One, two, ba. Just to feel the breath in it, you breathe with it, uh, give a bit of space to it, and that'll give uh, a sound that has warmth and, and air in it, if that's what you're looking for. But remember to do it on the third beat in that um, uh, gesture. Um, good, but ultimately, we're going to do it one more time, this section. Ultimately, what I'd like to, to, to see from you now is more sense of line and calm. Um, and you, the way you can achieve that is by reducing the number of impulses here, and if you want, at measure 25 where we start is uh, to just take, oh, thank you, that's very, let's just, uh, uh, um, what I'm going to do is conduct the, the descending cello line, cello and bass line, just to show you what I mean by indicating to them line.
Thank you. I was giving I was giving Claire a little bit of the old elbows there just to indicate that we're not going to move forward too much. Of course, another thing and a last point before you conduct this again to bear in mind when when working with the piano is that um, a piano will tend to be on the front edge of your beat, yeah. and uh, an orchestra will tend to be on the back edge of your beat. Um, that's tendencies. It's not always the case. But uh, what I just did, if you want to indicate to them to slow down a bit, take again the, the music out of the point of, of it and just give a little bit of this. If you, if you go to someone, whoa, yeah? Right. It's like, whoa. It's exactly the same body language. Hmm. Hmm. Slow down. Or, hmm. so, it's, so it's like, ah, hmm. ah. Yeah, simple sure. body language, but just I it's a very useful tool along with stop or go. <laughs> um, it's a useful tool to practice. So please um, uh, just take all of those things on board. We've talked about a lot of stuff going from 25 uh, through to uh, the Allegro Vivace. Okay. okay, and I won't stop you, I promise. <laughs> Think of the sound you want. Breathe. Pa. Very good. Now indicate sostenuto, please. Bravo, great, good job. Thank you, Josh, that was excellent. So um, finally, before we move on into the second movement, with what we've just discussed in mind, um, could you uh, approach the introduction again? Um, let me just, I'm, I'm gonna conduct it once, um, talking through a couple of the points as we, uh, we think of them, and I may just sort of hold on certain bars or not, we'll see what happens. So at the beginning, for today we have a, a, a piano, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's useful just when you're looking at the score, be aware the second horn here, um, just, just be aware that that is not necessarily a note that speaks easily, sure. this low okay. B flat, okay? Um, that's something to have in mind. Now you may want to, the second horn will probably be over there, it could be over there, but probably over there. Just before you start, just double check that they're set and they're comfortable. Okay. It's only a kind of fair and friendly thing to do for them. Um, Yes, you're going to be thinking about the pizzicato. Um, we, you and I have talked about it before, this idea of subdividing your beat so that it's very clear. So that uh, any, anybody who's watching you for pizzicato can go and boing, exactly. So that's something you're going to be thinking of. Um, and, and then when you get into the second bar already, the fascination that is that G flat, mm -hmm. the unexpected nature of it. Again, we are so used to performing pieces that we know very well, and it's very easy to lose the wonderment that would have happened at the time, where you say, all right, it's, it's Ludwig van Beethoven, we love him, he's 36 years old or whatever he was around, and uh, oh, he's had some difficult times recently, he wrote that Eroica, that was an amazing piece, I love that. What's he going to do in the next piece? It says Grand Symphony in B-flat major. So we hear a B-flat, okay, B-flat, and then he goes weird immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important to remember that for an audience, it'd be like, what's he doing? <laughs> Is he gone? He's gone completely, right? So, okay, so we're going to take the opening. Good to avoid crescendo there. Response from the cello bases. Of 
course, the B-flat doesn't get re-attacked in the orchestra, it's just the end of... Now this is interesting. We go the same direction to the G-flat, but instead of resolving to F, I just waited on the downbeat a bit. And then we're where we were. I'm indicating diminuendo for the cello basses because this naturally gets a little louder because more people are playing. But it, the amount I'm beating will work completely. Okay, so I've covered a couple of points there, t talking about them. Um, it's, a, it's a very different feeling and experience conducting a, a, a piano to an orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, that very first, uh, the very s second bar, you can, if you want, just go like that. And everyone will be like, I can't follow what he wants, but you'll get a wonderful sound. It'll be almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just takes a bit of controlling, but you can really risk things in this introduction. Okay. Careful not to double with your left hand unless you want to. Great, thank you Josh, excellent. That's excellent. Um, we're gonna move on to the second now, but just a, 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 a couple of very small uh, points there. Um, when you give these bars where there's nothing happening, mm -hmm. I understand uh, absolutely why you're not uh, beating through them. I think indicating a little bit is useful, especially if it's a first rehearsal, um, bong. Even, even if it was dom, that your first movement there, a little indication is to the left, where the second beat would be. So one, two, and then you can rest if you want. But it's clear that you've set a slight parameter. Um, it's only a subtlety, but you, you gave the downbeat and you kind of went out to the right. Sure, okay, it's, yeah. Which is, it's not the end of the world. People would have figured it out. But just to be certain, one left, and then you're set to go. That's just one point. Okay. Um, when it comes to that line in the bassoon and the cellos that you're indicating, you were using your left hand, which is great. Um, something I would uh, practice uh, for, for anybody who wants to sort of indicate things with the left hand and the right hand is, is, is definite independence. So let's say you want to indicate the whole of that line in the bassoons. You go, you gave the cutoff for them actually on the downbeat of measure s seven or eight uh, it is. Um, you, you gave it 
on the downbeat rather than just after the downbeat. Again, it's a subtlety, nothing would have gone wrong. But if using the left hand to indicate also for the celli and basses, it's useful to keep the continuity that you start through the passage that they're playing, just to give them a sense of being with them for all of it. But it's just, again, something to practice, because that, that line could go over several bars, and is often a very useful tool um, this sort of independence. So it's something to, to work on a little bit. Um, good. So, uh, bravo. There, we had talked uh, about a small section in the center of the, the movement. Um, and actually, maybe we could just look at that uh, briefly, which would be coming in at measure 261. Is that what we said? Yeah, yeah. letter F, exactly, letter F. Oh, I'm sorry, it was letter F. So for any of you reading along on the score, this is letter F in the first movement. Um, and this is a, a, a famously tricky passage for, for the orchestra. And there are lots of things that as a conductor you can do to help. And there are even more things that you can do to hinder. So uh, give it a go from letter F, and I'll uh, have a look at what you do. Okay, so Claire was very, very kind to you indeed there. Indeed. She <laughs> there could have been a couple of moments where uh, if, if you'd been in front of the orchestra, there would have been uh, not a huge amount of clarity. So the first point uh, is two, uh, 279, 280. Uh, if you want them to slow up, uh, you have to be quite clear that's going to happen. You arrived on the downbeat, you indicated a bit of slowing up, and then you arrived on the downbeat of 281 uh, a, a little bit early. Um, let me just uh, conduct through the passage, uh, talking through uh, what's happening. This is from letter F. We'll just start a little under tempo, Claire. So, um, bop, bop, bop. so again, you might want to indicate the, the lines here. Then you want to get the first violin's attention to the drum. And now back to the first. Make sure mm, Great. So uh, the snafu aside, um, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of things there. Where you have in measure 294, bop, bom, bom, bom. Again, the, the technique we were talking about earlier, feeling that a little bit in your elbows is useful. So, just have it internalized. So you're conducting the first violins, but you're aware in your body language mm, bom, bom, that we don't want that uh, to run away. And mainly uh, the group that you're going to want to to make contact with is the first. And in this, um, in the in the music that it begins around 278, um, the four bars where they're alone, be with them and start to use the elbows again to indicate that you're going to be slowing down. In a first rehearsal, that would be very useful. So I'll just show from F again and F. So it's first and seconds. Now you're with them. Yeah. I'm going to show one, one, one different option. And F. So let's say we wanted to do more. So depending on, thank you very much, depending on how they, I, I normally keep it in tempo, but if you want that to be a fermata, you can make it actually as long as you want, just stop there. But the key is that third and fourth bar of the phrase, the last two bars before they play the long pianissimo chord, is thinking three, four, 
one. So we're really beating bar rhythms the whole time. One ha ha hun two hoo 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 three he 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 four ho 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 one ha ha hun two hoo 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 three he 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 four ho 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 one ha hun two hoo 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 three he 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 four ho and one. So if you have that subdivision in your mind, you can control that last bar as much as you want. It could be uh, three he 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 four ho 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 one or three he 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 four ho ha ha one or three he 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 four ho ha and one. You then decide whether in the beat you show the subdivisions. Um, do you want to give that a go? Let's just do it uh, slowly. So, pop, pop, beep, pop, beep, pop, pop, beam. Let's beat it together. And F, pop, 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 pop. Bada, if you want to know, bada, da, and to connect them. One, uh, 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 two, uh, uh, three, e, e, four, oh, and, and one, and three, um, one, two, um, and. We're going down. And again, three, four, three, and four, and one, and tempo. And then we're basically back in tempo. But it's the same thing if you're beating something that's in a fast one, to in your mind at the very least have the bar rhythms. And it's useful to sometimes also just outline a four, four uh, for the orchestra. And this motion, so wa ha 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 two hoo 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 three he 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 four ho ho ho, will always be clear. We're slowing a little bit, okay. and then you have the option to subdivide in the in the last bar. Great. We'll move on from that sure. and just do a few minutes on the uh, beginning of the slow movement. Right. Thank you, thank you. Sorry to stop you so soon. Um, uh, the tempo is excellent. You're exactly okay. where where it's, it's okay. well. It's where Beethoven marks it. Sure. Um, and uh, again, this is a, this is a long uh, discussion. I've actually talked with with Sean Rice from the orchestra and podcasts about about tempos in okay. in Beethoven. Um, the the way I would sum it up for me is that uh, it's a great starting point. He, you know, th there are people who've postulated that he didn't understand how a metronome worked, <laughs> that his metronome was broken, that lots of things. They, they, all, yeah. they, they all may be. Um, for me, the process of clearing my mind and saying, okay, let's imagine this has been passed to me by a composer today. Is there any problem with the tempo? There are a couple of, the, the, the first movement of the, of the Eighth Symphony is very, very, very fast. Mm -hmm. the, first movement, the last movement of the Eighth Symphony is very, very fa fast. It's doable. Mm. It's doable, but it's kind of, wow, that's hard. Um, but there are almost no other instances wh that I can think of where if I'd been given it without ever having heard the piece before, I would say that's absurd. Yeah. Um, and this is one of those examples. We, s we often see the word adagio. He complained about it. He said, you know, these Italian terms, they're so catch-all. Mm -hmm. Uh, we see the word adagio and we've inherited centuries of <laughs> dust about, you know, rrrr and ha, um, but pim, pom 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 pom. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about, was how you can actually, in this tempo, in your beating, give the impression of breadth. So you, you gave the, the upbeat to the, to the second violins of the piano, uh, which was this. <laughs> So if this was a section, I'd just remind them to keep them da 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 ga da ga da ga da But otherwise, let's just try one. But here, it's said. Yeah? Thank you. So um, there's, there's in this uh, piece, from the stroke point of view, and dum, pop pom pop pom pop pom pop pom pop pom pom Bom, 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 a fairly natural stability. 
But of course, da, 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 da doesn't necessarily feel like an adagio to people. But if you were to do one, two, three, one, there's a beautiful, slow breathing adagio tempo. Um, so there are still um, many orchestras, when you start off in this tempo, they think, my God, what's wrong with him? Uh, why is he doing this so fast? And then you, you just power through and then, <laughs> if necessary, point out that it's the marked tempo. But one way you can immediately ameliorate that sense of surprise at, at the quicker tempo, we can, and there's 40 years now of recorded material where they've used that tempo. But if there is surprise, and even if there isn't, I think it's very important to once you give rom, pom, 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 to slowly through the bar move into pom. Now, practically speaking, as I just did, it means and eighth note, eighth note, reduce the eighth note, quarter note, pom. Okay. One and two and three, pom, pom, pom. And then you're freed up either to, to not beat at all with the left hand um, or to combine the left hand and the right hand, but indicate with the right hand whether you want or with the left hand rather, or whether you want because this is what an orchestra will want from you. They'll want to know, are we going to be phrasing to the second bar, to the third bar, away from the first bar. Um, so if you have that in mind, I'd love for you to just do the opening one more time, starting exactly as you did, which was excellent, and then go into a three with clear, long phrase marks. Sure. Thank you. Uh, just to stop you, um, I, would, I would try and demand that it's a little bit more clip. Go come and then run the bomb. If if you we we'll just start off play as you did before. I might just add just as a sort of moment of didactic kind of boringness. I might just say gun da dum. If it starts off very clipped, da da da. You might want to say rom po pom. You might want to soften your gesture. Mm -hmm. But in that case, I would have said let's he let's head for a slightly more precise uh, or more clipped rhythm. Yeah, just one more time. Sorry, Josh, it was, it was beautiful. You slowed a little bit um, in your yeah, third beat. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I, I, I think we, we, we have got on the front end of the beat now. It's a little, a little quick, but... Make sure that that's very... Yeah, let's do it together once. I cheated. I did. I'm sorry. On the third beat, I did two Don't beats. You yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the next downbeat and away for the sake of argument. Crescendo, accent, subito. Great. Yeah. So one thing. It, it happened both times uh, when you first ran it through, and then just now mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and it happens often with orchestras too. Is that the fourth bar? because it's a rising line, mm -hmm. will naturally grow a little bit. That's, that's absolutely OK. But I if you hear it twice and you want to keep the crescendo to the next bar, yes. then uh, indicate it. Okay. Let's just try it together one more time. Okay. And I won't be naughty on the th third B, three, one. Oh. I'm sorry. Just one thing that can, is also useful technically <coughs> is even in the first beat to, to, to clarify between one and. So if you imagine it being in a, a, a two, one and hand, and two and a three, rather than one, one. Right. It's an option. It's an option. It's fine. But it's super clear if you go one and two. And so the two is a little bit more. So each of the main beats are a little bit bigger. Yeah. yeah. So we carry on. So we're going into three. Let's go away from the first bar. And let's go to the next bar for the sake of argument. And indicate a diminuendo, soft downbeat, crescendo. Now I would.
would subdivide to prepare the next bar. Great. That's great. So if you'll notice, there are two bars where I in instinctively subdivide. They were the fifth bar and then uh, six, seven, the eighth bar. Just because as the crescendo moves, it's nice to, even if it's by a fraction, give it some space. Um, and then it gives you gives you the option on the third beat rather than having one big forte beat, forte, and you can prepare the piano. Right, prepare. Yeah, okay. let's just do it one more time together, and then that's enough on the fourth for today. Sounds okay. Boom. Really draw in. Let's play very quiet. Okay, watch the crescendo here. Now a bit more control. Two, three, and bravo. And again, control. One and two. Da dum bum bum ba bum ba bim ba bim ba bim and great. Good. So those are a couple of points and they recur all the way through the movement, this idea of moving between three and two. Um, but uh, great work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, and the next one we're going to do is going to be the Fifth Symphony. So if this has Bye. been uh, interesting and useful, do tune in to uh, Beethoven's Fifth with Josh Bullen. Thank you again, Claire Stevens. Uh, see you again soon.